What's up everybody, welcome back to another drawing tutorial, Demon Slayer today, Upper Moon 1, Moon Breathing, right? So, bit of a complicated one, I'd say the hardest part of this, well, one of the hardest bits, will be the moon, the crescent moon ships. So I'd say if you have a stencil that has crescent moons in it, that would make things a lot easier, okay? So, because they're like circ two circles, sort of very sort of precisely drawn. If you look at it in the manga, it looks like he's used a stencil or digital, maybe digital, I don't know, but they're very, they're very perfectly drawn. So maybe he did a freehand, who knows? But um, yeah, so let's go. So just keep, bear that in mind, right? So pencil and eraser, definitely, you know, to erase mistakes and stuff like that. And you can always ink after. I recommend pencil for all these, at least when you're sketching it out at first, okay? So, I'm on landscape paper, you use pencil eraser, <laughs> and I pause if I go too fast, right? So we start with his eyes. So it's kind of like a dynamic pose, it's not just him looking forward, so he's kind of swinging his sword, sword goes in behind his back, he's looking over to the right. So really take your time, hit that pause button. Let's go. So, we start with his eyes. Center point of my page is about here. We'll just come up over to the right hand side a little bit. His head is kind of slightly positioned to the right. So, this, we'll start with his middle eyes. I always like to start like he's a normal character and then just add those extra four eyes around, right? So, let's just see how we go. So, we're going to start here, roughly, okay? And this is going to curve around. My Sharpie wasn't wasted. No, it's okay. Let's go around that, and then we'll bring it down around here. Bring it down underneath. We actually have tear ducts drawn in, like so, and you can see it here. Right, so that's like the rough shape. For his eye right and then on top so he has like these eyelashes drawn in like spiking sort of eyelashes if you're doing a manga style you know you can do these in real like a manga artist as if they were using a brush or something you know and then you just go back down like so nice. and inside we have his iris so a circle around there then we have that upper moon one eye so like done in Japanese calligraphy so you know if you wanted to be sort of super authentic you could like try and do a calligraphy style we'll do our best so we go line down there sorry now um, I should have prepared it so we go across there so and then there is another so the line just sort of coming up this side, just there. And then we have two symbols, one on the left, one on the right. So we'll start on the left. So it's like a snaking sort of zigzag type one. So we'll go down like this, across, down, back across, down to there, and up like that. And then we have another symbol across this side. So we go down, across like so. And then like a diagonal here. And then this comes across to there. And then down and there. Something like that. Right, so the other eye then. So we go diagonal across. Curve it, turn it like so, and then we'll bring it down, around, similar shape to the other side, doesn't have to be exactly the same, of course. And then we'll add, thicken, we'll thicken this up and add some eyelashes, right, so.
All right, and then, so his iris and his pupil, well, his iris anyway, just a circle. So he's looking off to the right-hand side, so that's why I'm placing the circle sort of here. Right, so he's looking over that way. Okay, so it's not like bang in the middle, sort of going this way, right? And then that other uh, eye marking, so we go, all right, so then there's a little marking, a line coming across here, it's like an upside down sort of T, and then this has like some legs or something on the side, and then there's another one that comes across the middle of that there, and then another one underneath. Like so, little marks or stuff on the edge, and then like an L there, and comes across. Right, so his eyes have all these lines on them, right? So he's got like diagonal right, lines that go, one that goes say, to the corner of his eye and then they go around sort of like, like the hands of a clock or something. You know, they go sort of around this way. Same over here, pretty much. Something like that. Right, so that's basically his two main eyes, right? He might have like some lines coming around, like some eyelid lines and stuff. No eyebrows, just sort of skin, right? Kind of this kind of stuff. Just coming around his eyes. So we'll move down now and do his nose, right? And then his mouth and his chin, and then we'll put in the rest of the eyes. So nose, we, we can just see sort of a line just for the side of his nose here. And there might be like some hatching sort of on the top of his nose there. And then his other nostril, just sort of there. And his mouth, semi-open, right? So we'll go diagonal up, across, down. And then we'll just bring this across this way back here bottom lip line so demon slayer style it's kind of like this sort of shadow triangle underneath his bottom lip chin just down here goes around right. so in terms of proportion now and things i would say top of his eyes to his nose is about the same as nose to chin Okay, top eyelid to the nose, about the same as nose to chin. So just the top portion just here. That's about the same. And then nose to bottom lip, about the same as bottom lip to chin. Right? So nose halfway between sort of top of his eyes to his chin, and then bottom lip halfway between nostrils and chin. Right? So once you get that, you can start to go up his face, the side of his face. So we sort of gradually curve, right? that with the other side all right so this is his jaw and jaw normally stops about mouth and then it goes up the side of his face about mouth level just here and then it'll go up the side of his face and it'll kind of it's not sharp turn it's just kind of gradual up to about here because he's got like long hair okay so we can't see like all of his face Right, roughly like this, right? So hair on this side and this side. So the the wind is kind of blowing his hair this way, right? So on this side, say we've got like a piece of hair that'll go. It's kind of 
down the curves around sort of there. Nice. This will be a spiky piece of hair that will go back. Like that, right? And so this eventually will come up and become part of his hairline, so it can go and part of his fringe as well. But we'll just go up across the hairline. So his hairline, let's say, sort of like put it here. And so just a V sort of in the middle of his head. It's about eyes to forehead, about the same as eyes to mouth maybe, just up here, or where his eyebrows would be, so like top of his forehead to where his eyebrows would be, is about the same as eyebrows to like the nose, just so we don't make his forehead too big, you know, to keep things in proportion. So this has sort of hairlines and stuff coming across, this and eventually it'll come down and join this sort of area there. And on this side, so we've got like some fringe that comes down across his face, okay? So, say we've got like a hair spike here, coming down across his face this way. We'll go up to there. And this is like hair. Lines coming down in here. And then the opposite side comes up. Down to there. And then we have another piece of hair or fringe that will come down across his face going this way. Like that. So this goes under his eye, and then we'll bring it back up. It might go over his eye a little bit. Back a bit more into here. You can add some hairlines and texture lines if you want. Like so. He's another fringe on the other side, right? But maybe we'll just just put the top sort of portion in first. So it comes down this way. The in interior part that would be similar to the other side. Comes down like that. And there could be some like hairlines in. Stuff like this. Okay, we'll just do those four other eyes on his face now that we have all that done. So, let's go. So, other eye here. Like this. Bring it back down. And like so, and we'll add the eyelashes. There, and it's iris. And I think all the rest of these eyes, right? So we just have a pupil and then like um, no markings, thankfully, just like these veins and stuff coming around, just like these letter Y kind of shapes. kind of thing right and then again we have more line 
is coming out from each eye. So it's going around. So like this, and then the other eye, that's it's underneath this hair, right? So we can only see like the bottom sort of eyelid here. And it comes across this way. Some eyelashes, maybe we can see underneath that. And then his iris, circle. Pupil. veins in the eye, tear duct, and then those lines that are coming and then some like frown lines and wrinkle lines and stuff coming around. Right, so then two eyes down here. So we start with this sort of tear duct in there and then bring it around. Thicken it up and add some eyelashes. This one goes around his face, tear duct. Iris just in here. Pupil. Veins in the iris. weird lines in his eye. An eyelid line on top, eyelid line coming around the bottom, and then we add another eye down here. Same shape again. Pupil, iris looking off to the right, veins on the inside, got to add eyelashes, I'll add them now. Thickening up the top eyelid, adding the eyelashes. So, and then eyelid line coming around the eye. Like so, okay, so he has like he's doing his moon breathing, right? So he's got like veins on his face, he's like fighting and stuff, so I'm just gonna add some of these veins, right? on his forehead, coming around here, and coming in around his eye, and his scar, so we can just see it coming out from underneath his hair, coming around here, There's a couple of spikes, just in there, and maybe some on this eye, get back underneath his hair in there. There's some more spikes in there, but you just color it red, sort of in, in along here. And then there's some on his face, like this sort of flame-like shape. Spikes from down there. Another one up here. Like so. Right, so rest of his hair. So let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay, so over here, so we've done that piece of his fringe, right? And we've a little bit more sticking out. Most of the hair is over this side, but we'll just do the little bits that we can see over here. So it comes out, down. Like 
like so. Just kind of spikes out here on the bottom. Whoop. Down under his chin. Let's make him up a little bit here. Another spike. Maybe there. So he's got like long flowing hair this side. So this is like his fringe, and his fringe will do the fringe on this side. This way, down, down here. Coming over this way, spin back in, down over here. Here. So remember, like hair moves, so don't worry if yours isn't exactly the same shape as mine or anything. Hair blows in the wind and stuff moves around. So, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. That's just the general shape for his fringe on that side. And you can see a little bit of his ear inside here somewhere. So I'm going to guess. and ligaments inside. Okay, so then the rest of his hair. Up, up this way. Goes up. Top of my page. Back down. Another sort of curve going this way. off like so again spike going up this way so lots of hair flowing this way now back in Another hair spike in here and then some coming down this goes in underneath Spikes coming out the side of his head. So coming down. Down to here. Back in. Back into there, and this will come down. This will eventually go behind his shoulder, okay? So we'll just add what we can see. Come down this way. So his shoulder's about here, right? So we'll just wait for a second until we have his shoulder done, and then we can finish that. If you want to add any more texture to his hair, you can while before we move on anyway. So 
Okay, so we get in his like his torso and his body, and then we'll deal with the hand and the sword, right? So arm coming across the front of his body, it's kind of twisted. He's a hand here, blades coming out behind. So what we can see of his neck, right? So we can see like a little neck line here. And a trapezius line there. Right? He's quite hunched over. And then, so his collarbone. His neck line is over here. And then collarbone. So that's like the middle line for his body, right? So you'll have a chest line. That's his collarbone. So then chest line has to come down to it this way, right? Central line for his chest. And then her collarbone goes up towards his shoulder, somewhere up here. Quite vertical, just up that way. It's like that, right? So it's good to do sort of collarbones. They help, right? So you could have another sort of neck muscle line here. Maybe something else there. So shoulder on this side, comes down around. Like that. And then we have sort of an armpit bump line there. And then the rest of his chest comes down in like that. A little bit underneath here. A line just for where his chest and his shoulder meet, maybe here. So we can see his back here and his arm that comes across his body here. So, like abdominals and stuff, a little bit come down that way, right? And ab lines sort of there. And then shoulder and arm come down across this side of his body. So, trapezius on that side there. So this is his back. We'll do that first. So like bumps that way. Another back muscle bumping there. And then his rib cage area down like that. And then we can see like some of his clothing just down at the bottom. So back and shoulder where it joins his back is here. So the arm comes down in this direction, right? So we got like shoulder muscle curve line there bicep bump line like so tricep along the other side so tricep usually comes down and steps in it's a good way of drawing a tricep and the bottom of the tricep there broken up into two separate parts you could have a line just for his, the rest of his shoulder and his armpit kind of that way and maybe right so his shoulder muscle line there more so tricep that way, front of the bicep there. And then this comes down to his forearm, which will just go off the bottom of my page then. Down there. So he has veins coming across his chest as well. So we'll go this kind of thing, right? Coming along here. you want on his bicep so we'll just make this raised up a little bit coming across the bicep here and we'll do one coming across his shoulder Adding some sort of hatching there for his trapezius kind of area. And should we see? So maybe like oblique, maybe some abs here, something like that. Okay, so there's a hand holding a sword coming out here. Both his hands are holding, we can't see the other hand, but we 
you can see this hand here. So it comes out, the arm comes out from his body. Just there, okay? His forearm. And then we meet the bottom of his hand here. So we got this sort of W kind of shape for the bottom of his hand right there. And you can see some wrist bones and some wrist veins. <clears throat> like so. So the thumb wrapped around, right? So we go up, cross, change direction, down for his thumb. So it goes around the bottom. And then bottom of his hand comes across the blade, the handle of the blade. So we have knuckles and fingers, right? So go up from the top of his thumb. One, two, three, four knuckles. And then each of these is a finger. One, down like so, curves around the top of the finger. Comes out, steps down, goes around, <coughs> into there. Top of this finger is kind of just so here. And then out, down, around, like so. And then the handle of his blade will go down that way. Add some fingernails, so simple, just add the subtly, just sort of add the, the curvature of the ends of the fingernails, like so. Something else here, like that. And then the handle of his blade goes into his hand and comes down this way. So your blade is going behind his body now, okay? At the top here, we can see the hilt, like the, the hand guard, you know, the sort of metal part that's here, right? So, cross, bump down, both sides, bump around again, into here, around, down, to there. So then, this has an edge. Something like that. And then we have like eyes inside. There's eyes all over his sword, right? So he is the all seeing demon. The symbolism is interesting. Lines all in this. You don't have to be as detailed or as careful and in little details like this. They're just sort of extras right and then there's these black growing sort of lines they look like sort of branches of trees or webbing or something just all over and it's all on the sword as well so our sword then ruler might be helpful did i do i have one yeah okay so we go, oops so we go this way And then the center line. Okay, so we come out up here somewhere. It kind of starts to curve up here, but let me see here. We go here. So you can add a little, a little curve to it by slowly sort of turning your ruler. And that's what adds this kind of curve. And, and then we go. But that's like an advanced <laughs> ruler technique. So it comes out that way, right? And then he has more hair here. And then there's a spike that comes out from the sword up this way, right? So where is it? So let's say the top of the spike is like here, okay? You just gotta pick what to add it, and then you just curve it back into the blade. It joins the blade like underneath here somewhere. So we'll just go, yep. 
go underneath his hair into there. And then the other side will go down. Put his body there somewhere. And then this has eyes on it as well and all stuff. And I think there's another one. So I'll draw the other one of these. It's over here. Coming out from behind his head, okay? So it's real long. This one might go off my page. So let's just fly away. Let's just go. Yeah, just go off my page that way. And then. There's like another one up here, but I don't think we can. Is it too high up? Yeah, it's like higher than his head. Okay. Right, so then more eyes, right? So like more of these sort of eye shapes. You can do them quite quickly, you just draw the general shape. It doesn't have to be perfect sort of eye shapes. Just stuff like this, and maybe like another one. So, and then a couple, maybe one here, eye shape, some on his blade on this side, maybe one here, like that, and then there is some coming down the handle of his sword as well. Pupils. Some like eyes on the handle. Like so, and then irises inside with the veins. Yeah, they're vein eyes. Some of those lines on them. Iris, pupil, vein. I'm doing this quite fast now. I'm not. I'm not really being careful at all. I'm just sort of getting a feel for it and throwing them down. Another one in here. So then there's the middle line for the sword as well. I forgot to add it over here too. It like comes across these eyes. Kind of like that. And then each of these will have their own iris and pupil. And over here. And these have like all veiny lines and stuff on them. Give me some tear dots. And then all along the sword, there is, the, is these um, tentacles, right? So like coming up around lots of them. Crawling all around the sword. Hmm. 
my cat is meowing at the door. I'll be right back. He wanted to go outside. Okay, so more eye lines. Maybe more of these eye lines in here. And tentacles sort of all over. Tentacles or veins, I'm not sure what they are really. Right, how are we getting on? What's left? So like that. This is a pretty complicated drawing now. One person I know requesting this over and over and over. I wonder if it helped. I wonder if they wanted something easier. Okay. That's him, right? So now you just add like all that moon breathing. Okay, so this is actually like quite tricky. Okay, so you just kind of, if you look in the manga, there's like just lines for clouds sort of going around in like different sort of patterns, right? And then you just add those crescent moons all over. So if you have a stencil, definitely, or something like that would make it a lot easier like something circular to draw around to do that kind of crescent shape and then do a circular inside. But if not, we can just sort of try and add these moon shapes, right? So just these spiky sort of circular. Again, in the manga, they're kind of perfect, right? So, and they're kind of all different shapes. So you got this interior circle and then this goes around so i'm doing like the pattern sort of going maybe this way right so we'll go out from his sword out around here so one there and you like you can add as much of these as you want it's kind of personal choice really Definitely sort of sketch these out first now with a pencil and stuff. I would say if you have a crescent moon stencil, use it. It'd be a lot easier. So we start kind of with this half finished circle. Feel like that so you don't quite finish the circle. And then you go out around the other way. So maybe another one here. That's maybe like we put a small one. Maybe sometimes they're like back to back. I'm just looking at the the image here now. Sometimes there's like so where do I put it? So like there. that kind of thing right and then there could be like some half finished ones and stuff it's like just going off the page up here you know that way maybe can in there um 
Right, so there's a few there, and then I'll, I'll do some like down here as well. So, sorry, now that's my chair moving loudly. So, so you do like a circle with a gap, and then we go back around to the other way. Another one behind this one. Another one. Like so. And you just kind of keep going until you're happy that you've got enough or you, know, you, you just kind of keep going basically. We'll put some coming behind here as well, I guess. Maybe just one. No, we'll do a double back to back, right? So we'll go circular around that way. And then So, and then, like, bring this one around into there. Right, so then it's breath, so wind is what we're thinking. That's like the aim of this whole thing. So, some wind kind of coming from behind his body, right? So, like this sort of lines like so so it's kind of textured and, and sort of bumpy and stuff those the moons are on top of the, of the wind right so it comes up off the page that way right I'll come back in a little bit here and then it'll go and from behind his body this way as well. So like big sweeping sort of lines up this way, right? All this air and you could do like some more down here. And then some uh, another one coming out from behind this way. So so we just kind of gradually building it up. Some more line coming out this way. Breath of the moon. And we'll we draw some coming out of his mouth, maybe. Maybe like, I don't know. I don't want to mess it up now. <laughs> so, uh, maybe something coming out this side, like just a light, sort of cloudy. So 
something like that. And then of course, if it's cloud, you'll erase the lines on the inside. All right, but I think that'll have to do. That is how to draw Kokushibo Upper Moon 1, Breath of the Moon. Hope was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.